Hey guys, Mrs. Bodishan here. Today we are going to look at our AKS portfolio for 9A. It says, I can analyze and interpret data to identify the relationships among wavelength, frequency, and energy, and in electromagnetic waves and amplitude, which is loudness, and energy, and mechanical waves of sound and seismic. So we are going to go straight into it. First thing we need to know is what exactly is a wave? So a wave is any disturbance that transfers energy through matter or space. All right. And I'm going to move me around as we go. Waves are vibrations that carry energy. Okay. So we're not actually moving the matter. We're just moving the energy along. Um, and you guys can notice this when we talk about like ocean waves. The, the water from the deep ocean doesn't actually make it to shore like you think it does. What's really happening is it's kind of going in a little circular motion, and I'm going to show you a simulation in a minute, and you'll see that the matter itself is just kind of going up and down, okay? But what's moving forward is the energy. So the material which through a wave can travel is called the medium. Um, so in an ocean wave, the medium would, of course, be water. My sound waves getting to you, the medium is air, right? The, the sound waves are traveling through air. Um, sound waves, ocean waves, seismic waves require a medium. Seismic waves, you guys, are um, from like earthquakes, right? So they travel through the earth. If there's no medium, there's no sound. Um, because, because of this, there's no sound in outer space, all right? So waves that require a medium are called mechanical waves. That's just one type of wave is a mechanical wave. Um, Waves that can travel with or without a medium are called electromagnetic waves. Um, these are going to be the ones like visible light, like from the sunshine, right? Uh, TV, radio waves, x-rays, gamma rays, etc. Those are good examples that you do not necessarily have to have a medium, but it can go through a medium as well. Types of waves. Um, we have two types. The first one we're going to talk about is a longitudinal, so I'm going to cover this one up so you're just looking at this one when we talk. So the longitudinal is, uh, well, I'm going to read this part. The particles vibrate back and forth, which is parallel, along the path of that that the, the wave travels. In other words, this wave is going to go backwards and forwards in a parallel fashion, okay, to the disturbance of the wave. And these spots that are really close together are called compressions because my particles are all compressed together, right? And then it kind of springs back. And you can see this part right here that's kind of all my particles are separated out further. It's called a rarefaction. A really good example of a longitudinal wave is going to be like sound waves, okay? This is an example of a mechanical wave as well. I'm going to switch you, and I'm going to show you our second type, which is a transverse wave. Particles move up and down, which is perpendicular to the direction of the wave. Uh, perpendicular means it forms a right angle, right? So if you look at this wave, this is a transverse wave, and it's labeled. Um, a really good example of this would be electromagnetic waves, which are, of course, um, able to travel without a medium, right? So if you look at this, we have the trough at the bottom, the crest at the top, the amplitude is from the rest, which is this dotted line. So if we stretch this out, this would be like a flat line. In other words, no wave, right? No disturbance. That's what we call rest. So amplitude goes from rest to the crest or from rest to the trough, okay? Wavelength goes from crest to crest. That's how we measure one wavelength. Or you can do trough to trough. Or technically, you can do any point until it repeats again on the wave, and that would also equal one wavelength. So if we're looking um, at these vocabulary words, we've already gone over amplitude. What I want you to understand is, as amplitude increases, energy will increase in your wave. Okay, so the higher up your wave goes, the more energy you're going to have. Now, wavelength if you decrease wavelength, you're going to get more energy. So the wavelength was from one crest to another crest, right? So if we start decreasing that wavelength, our waves are closer together. They're like really fast, right? Or really, really tight, in other words. That's going to increase our energy level in that wave as well. And frequency, frequency is a new one. 
It's the number of waves produced in a certain length of time, okay? And um, it's usually per second. So as you see here, as frequency increases, energy increases as well. So let me show you guys the simulation. Okay, so let's put the simulation together. We have this green line that's going to represent our wave, but right now it's at rest. So no disturbance or no wave. If I increase this frequency, and notice my frequency is measured in hertz, capital H, lowercase z. So I'm going to increase it, and you can see that a wave is taking form, right? Um, if I increase frequency more and more, you can see that my wave is getting closer together. In other words, my wavelengths are shrinking, right? My wavelengths are getting shorter. Um, if I increase it even more, you can see a drastic um, shrinkage between each crest to crest. So my wavelengths uh, will become shorter and shorter as I increase frequency, all right? So as I decrease frequency, you can see my wave stretches out, meaning that I have lower energy because now I have wavelengths that are very far apart from each other. So my wave is very low, low energy and low frequency, okay? They go hand in hand. I'm going to kind of put my frequency in the middle. And I'm going to show you guys my amplitude. My amplitude is the highest that it will go on the simulation right now. But if I shrink my amplitude, or in other words, make it shorter, right? Um, you can see it getting shorter, getting shorter, even shorter still. The shorter that it goes, the less energy my wave has. So um, the lower the amplitude, the less the energy. If this was a sound wave, this would be a very quiet sound that you're hearing because the amplitude is so short. Um, if I were to bring this up, this would be a much louder noise that I'm hearing, okay? All right, so we're going to look now at these questions that are on your sheet together. We're going to do one at a time. So it says, which wave trial has the most energy and why? If you're looking at the data table, you can see that it's going to be trial five because it has the highest frequency and the shortest wavelength out of all the trials. Number two says, which wave trial has the least energy and why? It's trial one because it has the lowest frequency and the longest wavelength. Number three, it says, um, as wavelength increases, what happens to frequency? It decreases, and you can even look at the data table to know that. You don't really even have to know it in your mind at this point, right? Okay, so the next one says, make sure that you have these on your paper, right? Uh, which wave has the highest energy? Um, which, uh, what makes it have more energy? So it's going to be C, and I know this is hard to see. I'm going to move it for you. Um, it is C because it has the highest frequency and the shortest wavelength out of all three. Uh, number two, which wave has the lowest frequency? Describe what wave, uh, the wave's frequency, I mean the wave's wavelength. It's wave A, and it has the longest wavelength. And then number three, which wave has the shortest wavelength? And describe the frequency. It's going to be C, and it has the highest frequency, right? Moving on. You had to look at these, um, draw these on your sheet, describe which has the lowest amplitude, and describe it. The lowest amplitude is going to be number one, and it does have the lowest energy. Number two, which has the uh, most energy, describe its frequency and amplitude. It's going to be number three. It has the highest frequency and the highest amplitude, right? Number three says, if these were sound waves, which one would have the lowest volume? It's going to be number one, and because it has the lowest amplitude. Number four, if these were sound waves, which one would have the highest pitch? It's going to be three because it has the highest frequency. All right, you guys, that wraps up AKS 9A. If you have any questions, let me know.